Hi, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through the Course in Miracles, the main text, and we've been reading chapter 19. And today we're going to read section 10 of chapter 19, The Incorruptible Body. From the ego came sin and guilt and death. In opposition to life and innocence and to the will of God himself. Where can such opposition lie but in the sick minds of the insane, dedicated to mindness and set against the, pa the peace of heaven? One thing is sure. God, who created neither sin nor death, wills not that you be bound by them. He knows of neither sin nor its results. The shrouded figures in the funeral procession march not in honor of their creator, whose will it is they live. They are not following his will, they are opposing it. And what is the black draped body they would bury? A body which they dedicated to death, a symbol of corruption, a sacrifice to sin, offered to sin to feed upon and keep itself alive, a thing condemned, damned by its maker and lamented by every mourner who looks upon it as himself. You who believe you have condemned the Son of God to this are arrogant. But you who would release him are but honoring the will of his creator. The arrogance of sin, the pride of guilt, the sepulcher of separation are all part of your unrecognized dedication to death. The glitter of guilt you laid upon the body would kill it. For the ego loves, it kills for its obedience. But what it obeys, what, but what obeys it not, it cannot kill. You have another dedication that would keep the body incorruptible and perfect as long it is, as it is useful for your holy purpose. The body no more dies than it can feel. It does nothing. Of itself, it is neither corruptible nor incorruptible. It is nothing. It is the result of a tiny, mad idea of corruption that can be corrected. For God has answered this insane idea with his own, an answer which left him not, and therefore brings the creator to the awareness of every mind which heard his answer and accepted it. You who are dedicated to the incorruptible have been given through your acceptance the power to release from corruption. What better way to teach the first and fundamental principle in a course on miracles than by showing you that one seems to be the hardest can be accomplished first? The body can but serve your purpose. As you look on it, so will it seem to be. Death, were it true, would be the final and complete disruption of communication, which is the ego's goal. Those who fear death see not how often and how loudly they call to it and bid it come to save them from communication. For death is seen as safety, the great dark savior from the light of truth, the answer to the answer, the silencer of the voice that speaks for God. Yet the retreat to death is not the end of conflict. Only God's answer is the end. The obstacle of your seeming love for death, that peace must flow across, seems to be very great. For in it lie hidden all the ego's secrets, all its strange devices for deception, all its sick ideas and weird imaginings. Here is the final end of union, the triumph of the egos making over creation, the victory of lifelessness on life itself. Under the dusty edge of its distorted world, the ego would lay the son of God, slain by its orders, proof in his decay that God himself is powerless before the ego's might, unable to protect the life that he created against the ego's savage wish to kill. 
my brother, child of our father. This is a dream of death. There is no funeral, no dark altars, no grim commandments, nor twisted rituals of condemnation to which the body leads you. Ask not release of it. Be, but be, but, f but free it from the merciless and unrelenting orders you laid upon it and forgive it what you ordered it to do. In its exaltation, you command it to die, for only death would counter, would conquer life. And what but insanity would look upon the defeat of God and think it real? The fear of death will go as its appeal is yielded to love's real attraction. The end of sin, which nests quietly in the safety of your relationship, protected by your union with your brother and ready to grow into a mighty force for God, is very near. The infancy of salvation is carefully guarded by love, preserved from every thought that would attack it, and quietly made ready to fulfill the mighty task for which it was given you. Your newborn purpose is nursed by angels, cherished by the Holy Spirit, and protected by God himself. It needs not your protection, it is yours, for it is deathless, and with it lasts, and within it lies the end of death. What danger can assail the holy innocent? What can attack the guiltless? What fear can enter and disturb the peace of sinlessness? What has been given you, even in its infancy, is, is in full communication with God and you. In its tiny hands it holds, in perfect safety, every miracle you will perform held out to you. The miracle of life is ageless, born in time, but nourished in eternity. Behold this infant to whom you gave a resting place by your forgiveness of your brother and see in it the will of God. Here is the babe of, Be of Bethlehem reborn and everyone who gives him shelter will follow him not to the cross, but to the resurrection and the life. When anything seems to you to be of source of fear, when any situation strikes you with terror and makes your body tremble and the cold sweat of fear comes over it, remember it is always for one reason. The ego has perceived it as a symbol of fear, a sign of sin and death. Remember then that neither sign nor symbol should be confused with source for they must stand for something other than themselves. Their meaning cannot lie in them, but must be sought in what they represent. And they may thus mean everything or nothing according to the truth or falsity of the idea which they reflect. Confronted with such seeming uncertainty of meaning, judge it not. Remember the holy presence of the one given to you to be the source of judgment. Give it to him to judge for you and say, take this from me and look upon it, judging it for me. Let me not see it as a sign of sin and death, nor use it for destruction. Teach me how not to make it an obstacle to peace but let you use it for me to facilitate its coming. This is very powerful, if, uh, if not the easiest uh, wording to absorb. Let me see if I can uh, say something here. So, uh, I want to uh, dig in here right at the end. So when you, when anything 
seems to you to be a source of fear, give it to God and say, take this form from me and look upon it, judging it for me. Let me not see it as a sign of sin and death, nor use it for destruction. Teach me how not to make it of an obstacle to peace, but let you use it for me to facilitate its coming. So as you're going through your days, when you realize that the things that are frightening you, the things that you think are, are wrong, that that's a function of your ego judging life. And your ego is not a function of God as much as it is a function of your body and your wiring. And yes, God created you and your wiring, but that is where the separation in this 3D world has occurred. It is why you don't understand that you are not your wiring. When your ego is functioning, it is not following God's will, it is opposing God's will. And again, remembering that there is no such thing as death, but the body believes that there is death because the body understands that the body itself will cease to function at some point. And because of the wiring, that causes just amazing fear in the body itself. And so you really, you know, going through this material, learning A Course in Miracles is really about becoming conscious so that you are living consciously in your body, but not being run by your body. So I hope you have a great time with this lesson. If you need additional support, you can reach out to me, 907-351-3003. Texting is best. You can message me through Facebook or SoundCloud or YouTube or through my websites, lindalamp.com and lindalamp.shop. And until uh, tomorrow for the uh, daily lessons or next Sunday for the next installment of the main text, much love and namaste.